Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guy. This is a follow-on to my prior video about the Pyro Player, in which I surmised that Pyro is going to be more difficult, not simply because it's going to be more PvP, which may or may not be true, but also that it will be for some very specific reasons. The consequences will be reputation-based and thus harder to wash away by hacking a terminal or being a model prisoner. The second is that everything is going to be based on which Pyro gang is in charge where, so that there will be a greater immediacy to policy rather than just some lore entry about who the Imperator is. And finally, we will have less local infrastructure to support things like ship claims, repairs, rearming, ship storage and retrieval. And the bottom line for the third item is that we are going to have to be more reliant on each other for many of the basics. The standard expectation that we can just go wildcat on our own and have all set to right just a few moments later away at a planet, orbital base, Lagrange point will not be the case in Pyro. Most of the places where we go to help in Stanton in Pyro will contain the wreckage of a facility that used to do those things. Now, just like with the prior video, by Pyro I mean when the planet is first made available in 4.0 plus a little time for things to settle out, say by 4.2. So, for example, the character of the Pyro Org will change a lot if they can be operating from a Kraken, but not within that time period. Now, organizations can take many forms, not simply the formal organizations on the RSI website. And at the simplest level, we can be talking about just a strong list of trusted friends, who you know you can trust that a request for fueling or a request for medical help is not a trap. A step up from that is what I will call independent provider networks, for which I have been expecting will evolve, but haven't yet. A prime example of one is the fuel rats in Elite Dangerous. They are independent operators or even members of competing orgs, but when you request a rescue refueling in the IRC, you can trust that they will get there and nobody would willingly turn on the fuel rats because being blacklisted by them is just too costly a risk. I could easily see a Star Citizen fuel rats type of organization forming, and even one for repair or refining, although while everyone will need fuel at some point in time, not everyone will eventually need refining. And then, of course, you have the more formal organizations, like are on the RSI website. And these I am going to divide into two classes. The first are organizations too small to sustain simultaneous operations in both solar systems. They will have a tough choice, and my suggestion would be that they only make it a temporary choice. As in, do we want to operate in pyro for the next three weeks, and then decide what to do for the next three weeks after that, and so forth. Now, for an organization that is large enough to support simultaneous operations in both Stanton and Pyro, the obvious answer is to let each member work out where they wish. But that leaves aside how do you organize and control this. And it is my firm belief that organization and coordination for Stanton is entirely different than organization and coordination for Pyro for the reasons I talked about earlier. And so I think that a larger org should have a Stanton coordinator and a pyro coordinator, and that they should do that even if their formal organization structure is somehow different, such as by service types or military companies, that they could also have a Stanton coordinator and a pyro coordinator. Think of them like air traffic control. The pilots don't work for air traffic control, they don't belong to air traffic control, but they certainly do take directions from them. And just like ATC, there should be enough of a team of them that they can pass off one to another so that there is always one on duty for each system. And particularly for the pyro coordinator, the pilots will need to communicate with them out of game, in disk, or whatever other tool the org uses. Because a big part of the pyro coordination will be the timing of game entry. What I mean by that is if a player logs out of the game in a bed in a certain, say, starfare, that they need to be sure that the starfare has returned to the game before they do, because if it hasn't, then the player is going to enter the game at the last hab location they were at. And since hab locations are going to be far less available than in Stanton, the player may find themselves far away from where they want to be if that starfare isn't available. Another thing that the pyro coordinator will need to keep an eye on is what locations are camped and how intensely. As I said in my prior video, I expect Ruin Station to be camped almost constantly. And so, if you have players either logging in at Ruin Station or needing to travel there, the coordinator will need to give heed to making sure there's enough support to keep the marauders at bay. Another job of the pyro coordinator will be to pick the secret safe locations for the org. By this I mean a few locations where, even when they are logging out in their own beds, 
of their own ships, they do it at one of the designated locations. That way, when they log in, they will be able to log in together and begin right away doing things cooperatively. And of course, if the location is discovered by adversaries, to direct folks to a new or alternate location. This will play a role in the military operations as well. With so much fewer respawn and ship storage locations, a lot more attention will need to be given to reserve and time to return considerations. Let me give an example. Let's take a 12 against 12 battle. Team Red has a Carrick with a pilot and four turret gunners and seven pilots and one and two person fighters. Team Blue has a similarly manned Carrick and six pilots and fighters. They start to battle and take losses. Team Red has had everybody set their regen point to the Carrick med bed, and as the pilots arrive, they equip themselves for the boarding action that they expect to happen there really soon, because there really isn't anything else for them to do. But the blue team didn't set their respawn point to the Carrick. They set their respawn point to another Carrick at the start of the battle. It was a location just a minute away and which only had one pilot in it. But now it is full, including the hurricane that was on the hangar roof. So just when Red thinks the victory is there, Blue returns with a fresh Carrick and a fresh Hurricane and the obvious victory because they did a better job of reserve and replacement forces. In Stanton, such planning is less important because there are stations with med beds and ship terminals all over the place to serve as reserve and replacement sources, but not in Pyro. Another thing that will be important to the organization coordinators is the relationships. However, it will vary between organizations whether such, let's call it foreign policy decisions, will be made by the top leadership or left to the coordinators. And that is, what are the relationships the organization will have with the gangs of Pyro? Do they try to stay outside and above the gang squabbles, difficult as that may occasionally be, or do they decide to throw in with one or more of the gangs in order to gain access to their locations? Of course, there will also need to be cases where the Stanton coordinator and the pyro coordinator will need to coordinate with each other. Let's run through an example. Let's say the pyro coordinator needs a bunch of top quality Hurston Dynamics munitions. The Stanton coordinator works with a freelancer Max pilot to load up and start heading to the jump point. At the right time, the Stanton coordinator directs a starfare, perhaps from another location, to rendezvous near the jump point. Meanwhile, the pyro coordinator directs a pair of vanguards to the jump point to act as escorts. They jump through to the Stanton side, at which point they take direction from the Stanton coordinator, who directs all of them to the same location that the Starfare can top off all their tanks of both the escorts and the Freelancer Max. The Max and the vanguards go through the jump tunnel, and then the pyro coordinator directs them to the destination, keeping an eye on what other forces might be available if the vanguards run into big trouble and need help. At the destination, they all bedlock out. A few days later, the freelancer Max Pilot inf informs the pyro coordinator they are going to be logged in and are going to be wanting to return to Stanton. The pyro coordinator then arranged with prospectors, refiners, salvagers, and scavengers for a set of cargo intended to be very profitable delivered to Stanton to the location where the Max logged out. The Max is loaded, and when almost completed, the pyro coordinator arranges another pair of escorts. They take off towards the jump point. On the way, they get word that the pyro jump entrance is being blockaded, so the pyro coordinator directs the convoy to a new location where they will join extra fighters for a blockade run. The run is successful and they all arrive in Stanton and call the Stanton Coordinator, who sends them to a location where the Stanton Coordinator has directed a starfare that will refuel them all. Freshly refueled, the Max heads to delivery while the fighters return through the jump tunnel. And that is how I see a well-run, medium to large two-system organization running. And while the coordinators are essential to this scenario and undoubtedly will need to be skilled planners, they aren't what we actually think of as leaders. They aren't setting policy or direction or motivating or communicating beyond the essentials. Dispatchers rarely become CEOs, although they sometimes might become COOs. And now for an update on our Grow the Channel Ship giveaway. As of recording, we are over 67% of the subscriber goal and over 58% of the membership goal to release to someone their choice of either the Anvil Liberator, you know, that ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the Misk Odyssey Long Duration Exploration Carrier. One entry per video, members, you're entered automatically. And if the winner is a member, as of the publication date, the winning video, they will win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment on somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the model of the escort ship I used in my example. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.